Welcome to Take Away Weekly. I'm your host, Steve Smith, aka Z Axis. And yes, you can actually call me that, and I'll be leveling out your photography just in time for Christmas. Want to be a better photographer? Continue listening. Just before I help you look all like professional photographers, I've got some info that you need to know about this show. I have finally moved it to its own website where you could share your stories, suggestions, comments, and questions. Actually do our weekly survey questions, do our listener survey, support us by getting your own custom gear and apparel. Heck, you need to get the information I have on each of these episodes in the show notes. It's all in the same place including the links to the information you need for the weekly newsletter, all at tqaweekly.com. Now, before we get anywhere, let's get some info out. A, I am a photographer, and B, I studied under artists. So none of that stupid, naughty, whatever, crazy stuff on the bottom of my YouTube page or whatever. I know what I'm talking about. Let's get it all through your heads. Two things you need to remember. Lighting is key and your subject is more important than your ego. Now let's get to the first part, okay? We are going to deal with the subject. Who is the subject? The person in front of your camera. Otherwise your picture would be facing you, in which case, you know what, don't bother taking the picture. Here's something you need to know. Uh, put away the cell phone. It is not a digital camera and the flash is too small. This is how using your cell phone to make yourself look cool doesn't make you look like a professional photographer, doesn't work, and I'll explain why. And by explaining why your cell phone doesn't work, I'll explain why it flashes I do not like. Okay? A, any of these cheap photography digital cameras you can get for sub hundred dollars or cell phones that even if they cost eight hundred dollars have these tiny little flashes problem with this is the flash is too small so the intensity of the light is too bright and it bleaches your subject which makes it very hard to fix and you absolutely look like an amateur photographer so do yourself a world of favor and put your cell phone away Get yourself a better camera, and if at all possible, if you believe you're ever going to need a flash, get one where you can put your own flash on it. And this is how I'm going to explain it. The bigger the flash is, the more diffused the light is, the better your subject is going to look like. If you want to have lighting, and you're like me, and you don't want to use a flash, go to your favorite photography store, where you can also purchase a flash of your own, and get yourself a photography light. You can get a diffuser, which is what I use for the lighting of my show, and the diffuser could be put on a flash. There are ones that actually mount onto these external flash kits, and there are diffusers for professional lighting. So that is dealing with lighting. How about we get to correcting the way you take a picture? Imagine, if you will, the screen cut up into a tic-tac-toe into nine pieces. The head should be at the top third of the screen. This is important. Do not cut the top of the head off. It must be at the top of the screen. shouldn't be in the middle, but you shouldn't cut the top of the head off. Do not crop anywhere on the body at any joint. Your camera can turn into more than one position. Okay? You need to take a portrait picture of somebody, turn your camera over to the edge, walk up close, take a picture. The closer you are to the subject, remember that twit uncle that's always walking between you and your kids while you're taking a picture? He can't walk between you and your kids if you're right up to your kids. In the room, if it's a little dark, turn up all the lights. If that doesn't work, use a professional flash, like I told you with the diffuser, or, much preferred, the photography light, because it will light up the subject more evenly, especially if you use a diffuser kit on it. Now, like
like I told you, don't cut off the head, not at the joints. Use significant lighting with a diffuser and you'll have a better photo. What does this mean for you? Well, the next step will be easier. Now, I can tell you, I used to take my Canon A1, which I still have, which has a 120 millimeter lens with a zoom, which I don't use because I walk up to my subject. And here's the thing. I may take five, 600 pictures. I only like four, okay? Um, here's the thing. Those who are not as finicky as me, and me, I'm more finicky in photography than I am podcasting, will actually want to fix some pictures that look decent, but not absolutely great. Most of the time, all you have to do is balance lighting. What is the thing most people do? They open up Photoshop. I suggest you use GIMP because it's free. So you don't actually have that SOPA or PIPA thing to deal with. Just go over to GIMP, type GIMP inside the uh, google.com search engine. You'll actually find it at the top. Download it, use it. Most people will be content using contrast and brightness. I say, forget about it. Just like those dinka little flashes on your cell phone or those small little sub hundred dollar cameras. Do not use brightness and contrast. It's the absolute wrong tool. If you're trying to fix the lighting in a picture, you have to use something called Levels. Levels will help you correct very, very specific things. For one, using it as a general tool without using the color channels will help you balance out the overall lighting, the lights, the darks, and the midtones. On the screen, you see an example of one of the charts from one of my photography pictures that I took in a studio, which I just won't show today. I might show you in the future, but I won't show you today. Um, what you need to do is slide the little triangles that are white and black to the edges of the mountain, therefore balancing out the light. What do you do with the gray pyramid in the bottom, that arrow? Let's say it's just a little bit off. You know, you need a little bit more lightness, a little bit more darkness. You can actually drag that. You drag the midtones, it will correct the midtones in your color. And you know what? Save, print. You look professional. Congratulations, you just earned a new skill. Amateur professional camera person or photographer. All you need to remember is light your subject, crop correctly, don't cut off their head, don't cut off at the joints and the limbs, and make sure uncle can't walk between you and your kids by walking up to your subject and avoiding to use your zoom. This will make your pictures look better and you'll be less annoyed with the other people walking around. And everything you need is in your favorite local photography store. Next week, I'll be explaining how to create your own newsletter, how to run it, what you need for it to be successful. And as always, if you need any more information about this show, have questions, comments, suggestions, or stories, maybe you want to do my weekly survey or get custom gear and apparel, tqaweekly.com. That's the only address you need to remember from now on. Just type that in. You don't even need to type in triple W dot whatever. It's not going to work. It'll just go straight to tqaweekly.com. And thank you for listening to my show probably watching the show on YouTube or blip.tv, maybe even iTunes. If you need to subscribe to this show and you don't want to do it on any of those channels, go to our website. I've got more than one way to subscribe to the show. And as always, stay safe and online. Subscribe, share, like. Have a great day.